Every so often we get to drive something that is a little bit different, but that thing is not usually a family SUV, or one for that matter that isn't even on sale in this country. This is the Hyundai Nexo. It's a hydrogen fuel cell powered vehicle. I'm Jonathan and welcome to EV Brief. We've jumped into Hyundai's hydrogen fuel cell vehicle after reviewing the all-electric Ionic 5, so let's just remind ourselves about the technology within this car. Fuel cells have actually been around since the 1840s and they're commonplace in manufacturing and backup power. NASA has even used hydrogen fueled rocket engines. These days SpaceX uses more energy dense fuels such as liquid methane and kerosene. Essentially hydrogen is stored at great pressure in the Nexo and mixed with oxygen and electricity in the fuel cell. This releases even greater amounts of electricity and water as a byproduct. Now in the fuel cell monitoring menu you can see that when you press the accelerator hydrogen flows out of the tank into the fuel cell here, mixes with oxygen and then generates electricity which drives the motor. Uh, as soon as you press the brake, you can see that that energy is recuperated and put back into the battery. Now, it's only a small battery, about 1.5 kilowatt hours, I believe. So regeneration doesn't play as big a part here as it does with battery electric vehicles. Um, but one benefit of having a small battery and this sort of hybridized system is that the mass of the um, Nexo is only about 1814 kilos. The Nexo is light for an SUV and fully fueled weighs in at 1873 kilograms. Speaking of which, the Nexo has a fuel consumption or kilograms of hydrogen per 100 kilometer consumption of 0.95, meaning that when fully fueled, the 156.6 liters compressed to 6.33 kilos will give the Nexo a range of about 666 kilometers in Australia. Now, recently, a Nexo has completed an efficiency test of 887 kilometers, driven by rally driver Brendan Reeves. So why hydrogen? Aren't battery electric vehicles better for, well, everyone? Now the old fuel cell versus battery electric vehicle argument is one that is almost as old as the technology itself. Um, Hyundai's thinking is that fuel cell electric vehicles could basically replace diesel vehicles and battery electric vehicles would be great for replacing current petrol engine vehicles. Now let me explain that. Basically the thinking is that um, Vehicles that say need to travel long distances don't have time to recharge or are say in uh, remote areas of regional Australia and don't have the battery electric vehicle charging infrastructure, hydrogen might be suitable for that kind of application. Battery electric vehicles are also notoriously bad for carrying say a, a large SUV, a lot of mass with people and luggage on board or say towing um, and in that situation hydrogen may be better for that application. Um, battery electric vehicles, however, have huge advantages when it comes to city, city driving. They don't require a huge amount of energy to propel themselves at low speeds. Um, and there's a constant amount of brake regeneration going on in the city with stop-start driving. Therefore, the battery is being topped up at a much better rate than, say, highway driving. So what exactly is the point of a fuel cell SUV you can't buy then? Well, the Nexo is essentially a rolling research test platform to prove that the company can make a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle work. Hyundai says that the Nexo was critical in the development of its Exient fuel cell truck range, which is currently in development and in trials across Europe and expected to be released to customers by 2025. It is showcasing that hydrogen fuel cell technology is workable in passenger vehicles and indeed um, in Australia the Australian Capital Territory's government has just purchased 20 of these and will be refueling them from green energy at a local fueling station. For consumer rollout, fueling would obviously be one issue with this car. There's presently, I think, three in Australia, one at Hyundai's head office in Sydney, Toyota has one in Melbourne, and um, the ACT government has one that's run by Actu AGL in Canberra. So this is not something that's going to be rolled out at a mass scale. Australia just it's, yet. I think this would be the perfect vehicle for fleet applications where it's safe, it's comfortable and uh, it pays dividends in terms of running costs and efficiencies for governments and fleets.
Over to the interior and it's pretty spacious with a 461 litre boot. In terms of passenger comfort, the Nexo feels like most other SUVs in this class, roomy and comfortable without feeling cavernous. In fact, there's plenty of standard equipment with stop and go smart cruise control, blind spot monitors with collision avoidance assist, LED lighting all around the interior, many different storage cubbies and one with wireless phone charging, and heated front and rear seats, cooled front seats, and a heated steering wheel. There's a nice 8 speaker audio system from American company Krell, as well as Hyundai's special spaceship pedestrian warning sound for low speed maneuvers. Hyundai also trumpets the sustainability of its interior here with materials that are certified as such. Eco leather and fabric seats, sugarcane based fibres for woven textures like the carpet, and eco plastics for the dashboard consisting of bio based polymers that reduce the use of oil based polypropylene and polyethylene. Hyundai also includes a three stage air purification system that is claimed to eliminate 99.9% .9 of dangerous PM2.5 particulate matter. The inside of the Nexo is quite a nice place to be. It's circa 2017, the original design, so there are quite a few kind of silvery plasticky bits and plenty of buttons on the centre console, but um, it's very comfortable. You've got a two-spoke steering wheel, all the controls needed at hand, as well as uh, regenerative braking controls, just as paddles behind the wheels here, as Hyundai does for its uh, Kona. Now the Nexo has pretty adequate performance. It's not going to break any records, it's not as fast as its uh, upcoming sibling, the Ionic 5, but this is a pretty decent, um, pretty decent performing family size SUV. The handling, while not terribly sporty, that's not its intention, is communicative um, and it is quite nice uh, in terms of the ride and the damping feel. Full credit to Hyundai, most of its cars are tested here to ensure compliance with local roads and it shows. The Nexo, although not particularly sporty, feels quite planted and well damped for the variety of roads in Sydney at least. Steering doesn't have a huge amount of feel, but at city speeds it's just pretty comfortable. Hyundai has done an excellent job with the exterior of the Nexo. It was probably one of the first vehicles to have a full length LED light bar mounted atop the grille. Now it's a ubiquitous style trend of the 2020s. The Nexo has a very rounded form. The broad eyes and grille are quite welcoming without an offensively large snout a la Lexus or BMW. The flush aerodynamic door handles are a nice touch, as are the C pillars that are made to float with the black trim separating the painted panels and the vents through the middle. There are 19 inch alloys with low rolling resistance tyres, plasticky bits for that off road vibe, and the whole package looks surprisingly good three to four years on. It's contemporary without being revolutionary and stands apart from the rest of the Hyundai SUV range. So the Nexo. A lot of people are quick to dismiss hydrogen powered passenger vehicles, including myself. But perhaps there is a place in the automotive sphere for the lightest of elements in the periodic table. There are major environmental considerations, as there are with all fuels, environmentally and technologically. But most major economies are now gearing up for a future with hydrogen in the mix. As countries look to net zero emissions targets, hydrogen is becoming a viable alternative to gas for industry and manufacturing, and is likely to start replacing heavy diesel in shipping as fuel cells are scaled up. The jury is still out on whether hydrogen cars can compete with battery electric vehicles for efficiency and performance, but Hyundai is hedging its bets with both technologies. As guest Michael Dunn pointed out on a recent EV Brief podcast episode, geopolitical considerations also dictate that Japan and Korea are looking to alternate fuel technologies to China, which has gone all in on batteries. All that aside, the Nexo is a fascinating piece of technology. Driving this car, it's a strange feeling to know that you are likely the only person at that point in time in the city powered by hydrogen, and yet no one else has a clue. The Nexo looks, drives and feels like a regular ICE car, and perhaps that's the point. It's only available on a lease basis to fleets in Australia, and its ease of operation, comfort and carbon credentials when powered by green hydrogen make it a perfect vehicle for that purpose.